Hear some stories and memories from people who grew up and lived in Ely. We visited the Glamorgan archives. <laughs> where they showed us a lot of historical things. All of them about wow. Ely. Wow. Wow. Jets made a daring attempt to burn down Ely Racecourse stand last night or early this morning. Hmm. Ye gods. Oh dear. What's this, sir? A poster? It was summer 1905, Calbridge Road West. I remember a humming sound coming from high above my head. What was it? It was a newfangled airship. When I looked, I saw a most strange egg-like shape. Who could be flying such a strange machine? They could be famous explorers. I wondered what strange and exotic place it had been to. During the Second World War, Frank Gardiner of Grand Avenue Ely was a special police constable at night. But that day he worked for E. H. Stone Undertakers. After he completed his police shift, he would go to the workshop at the Undertaker's where he worked as a carpenter. To help in the World War effort, E.H. Stone also made crates for the bombs and bullets needed by the army. Frank would often sit on the coffins he had made and eat his sandwiches. 
He would often say, pointing to the ammo boxes, this is where we kill them, and then point to the coffins, this is where we bury them. Yesterday morning, at 2.41 a.m., at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command, and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender. Yay! It was VE Day, 1945. Yay, street party! We were at the table in the middle of the street, celebrating the end of the war. We had eaten loads of foods that our mothers have saved up specially. The best part of the day was when my dad suddenly appeared from nowhere. He had surprised us. He came home from the army on leave without it snowing. I worked in a corner shop in Ely and caught the bus on Moston Road around 5 a.m. There was an old woman living in Moston Road known as Old Mick. She caught the same bus each morning and always had a flag in her mouth. Every morning she fell out with the conductor. She always had an argument about something. I think he tried to avoid her as much as he could when checking tickets. Tickets, please. Oh. it here. It's old May. She always got off into town on Queen Street where I think she was a cleaner in a bank. I remember when me and me and the boys ran away from home. It was the 1960s. We hid in the Ely Woods for a couple of days. But then we ra ran back home. After being frightened by a drunken tramp. My mum knew I'd be back before long when I got hungry. She'd give me a clip from the ear. Some choice words, and then she named Jan Sarnies. I think she missed me really. Yum, yum, yum. In the 1970s, as a young boy, my dad took me to the dentist. It was just to the left of Pendine stores. I hated going. <laughs> the smell and sounds frightened me before I even got in the chair. He 
was a funny looking man and he scared the creeps out of me. <laughs> I haven't liked the dentist since. When we were kids, we used to hang around the bus shelter on Grand Avenue. Yes, we used to love playing football and climbing on top of it. That was until PC Perks would come by. Yeah, he was a mean old copper and would start scowling and shouting at us to get off. He would chase us away down the street, but never catch us. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our stories from Ely. We love Ely. Ely. Ha <laughs> ha